Okay, so these problems, we're doing the same thing, drawing our diagram and our bar charts, except now we're actually going to solve. Okay, so cart moving 5 meters per second collides with a spring. The instant the cart is motionless, what's the largest amount the spring could be compressed? No friction. So no friction, no heat. Uh, define the system with the diagram. Okay, so the system is everything, right? So the system is the cart, the spring, and the track. Okay, so what does it start with? Well, it's moving, so it's got kinetic energy, but it's at the same level, right? So there's no gravitational potential, right? There's going to be no change in gravitational potential energy, so it's all going to be kinetic. It's turning basically kinetic into elastic, because at the end, the velocity is zero, and it's going to squish that spring. So we'll choose four bars, right? Nice and easy. So four bars of kinetic will turn into four bars of elastic. All right, so there's my diagram. I have no work, I have no heat, so it's just kinetic turning into elastic. So when I write my equation, that's going to say 1 half mv squared equals 1 half kx squared. Determine the maximum compression of the spring. So I want to solve for delta x, right? So let's uh, algebra this up first. So mv squared over 2, I'm going to move that half in there. So half kx squared, so I can multiply 2 over, right, which gets rid of that, right, so 2, I'm going to multiply that over, and then I'm going to divide by k, and that'll give me delta x squared, okay, so, so the 2, so delta x squared equals mv squared over spring constant, so if I square root this, it gets rid of that, so that equals delta x, so let's plug in and solve. So the mass is 8. So 8 times 5 squared divided by the spring constant, which is 50 newtons per meter. And I'm going to square root that. So let's see. 5 squared is 25. So 25 times 8 divided by 50. And then I'm going to square root that. 2. Did I make sure I didn't miss any units? Right? So everything's in meters? Yeah. So it's going to compress the spring 2 meters. All right. So how about this next one? Rock is shot straight up in the air. The slingshot's been stretched to 0.3 meters. Assume no air resistance. Okay, so it shoots up in the air. So this is kind of similar. Well, it's the opposite of that one. So it starts, there's no kinetic because it's not moving, right? And there's no gravitational because there's zero. So it's all elastic. So start with four bars. And there's no air resistance. So there is, well, no. The greatest height the rock could reach. Okay, so I'm going to assume there's no friction because it says what's the greatest height the rock could reach. So I'm, realistically, it's not going to get that high because this stretching that back, it's going to create heat, right? But because this is saying the theoretical maximum, say there's no heat. So it's all going to turn into kinetic at the top. I'm sorry, gravitational potential, right? Because the velocity is zero. So there's no kinetic. There's no elastic because the spring's done. So it's all going to be gravitational. All right. And so... My system is the slingshot, the rock, and the earth. Okay, so let's write my equation. 1 half kx squared equals mg delta y, right? Because elastic's turning into gravitation. Okay, so determine the highest height the rock could reach. So let's solve for delta y. Well, I just got to divide mg over, so... Uh, k delta x squared over 2, and then I'm going to divide mg over, right, to get rid of it. That'll equal the height. So k is 100. My stretch is 0.30, so 0.30 squared over 2 times m is 500 grams, so 500 grams is 0.5 K 
kilograms times right I did that right yeah uh, G G is 10 I'm just gonna use 10 instead of 9.8 okay so let's do that point 30 squared times 100 nope I'm going to go times 10 again. Okay, so I got 9 in the numerator, so 2 times a half times 10. 2 times a half is 1. 1 times 10 is 10. So 9 divided by 10 is 0.9 equals 0 0.9. So 0.9 meters. All right, last problem. So determine the final velocity of this roller coaster, assuming a 10% loss to friction. Okay, so, well... This one's really skimpy on the words. So let's look at the start. Well, my system, first off, everything's in the system, right? So it's cart, I can't even write today. Cart, earth, track, right? That's everything. Okay. So at the start, no velocity, no kinetic. No springs, no elastic. So it's all gravitational. All right. So... At position B, <clears throat> there's friction, so I'm going to put like one bar for heat, and the rest of it will have become kinetic, right? Because there's no gravitational here because it's at zero, right? It lost all that gravitational kinetic. I'm sorry, I didn't lose it. It got turned into kinetic. Uh, and there's no elastic because there's no spring, so we'll call it three of kinetic. All right, so let's make an equation. So one, no. Gravitational is mg delta y equals one half mv squared plus q. Determine the final velocity of the rotor, assuming a 10% loss to friction. Okay, so that means it's going to lose 10% of what it started with. So let me figure out what it started with. So the mg delta y is going to be 20, the mass, times 10 for g, times the height is five. So 20 times 10 is 200 times five is a thousand, right? So 100 times 10, a thousand. Yeah. So 10% of a thousand is 0.10. That's a hundred. So a hundred is going to be Q because I lost 10% of my initial energy to heat, right? So my initial energy was a thousand and I end up so it's something plus 100, okay? So let's look at that equation again. mg delta y equals 1 half mv squared plus q. So I know this is 1,000 equals something plus 100. So, I mean, math. 1,000 equals something plus 100. That means that this has to be 900. So 900 has to equal my kinetic energy, mv squared. Okay, so now let's solve. So I'll move this over by multiplying. So that's 1,800 equals mv squared, right? So I multiplied by 2 to get rid of that. And so now I do 1,800 divided by the mass. So divided by 20 would give me v squared. So 1,800 divided by, I don't know why I'm doing that. It's going to be 90. See, it's going to be 90. So 90 equals v squared. So the square root of 90 equals v. So v is going to be uh, square root 90. 9.49. Easy peasy.